Hey everybody, and welcome back to Amira and Aunt Nellie's cooking show. I'm Amira. And I'm Aunt Nellie. And today we will be making candy ginger biscotti with white chocolate chips. Let's get to it. Okay. Amir, are you ready? Yep. So the first thing you're going to do is we're going to mix the dry ingredients in a medium bowl. So it's two cups of flour. Go ahead and carefully put those in there. All right. It's already measured out. One. And this is unsifted. You don't need to sift this. Okay. Put your second cup of all-purpose flour in there. Get it all out. Yep. And then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to measure out one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. One. Put it in there. And now you can do the half teaspoon. And then the next thing, you're going to take your teaspoon, and this is ground ginger, and take a sniff of this. It's very strong like ginger root, and it's been dried. Oh yeah, that smells good. All right, our final dry ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of salt. Yep. Put that in, now take the whisk, and whisk it up evenly, so there's no lumps and all of the salt and the ginger powder and everything is mixed and give it a good whisk. Go ahead. Now we're going to set our dry ingredients aside and mix our wet ingredients in a larger bowl. All right, now we're going to mix our wet ingredients. We're going to take a half a cup of butter, and you, as you can see, this is very soft at room temperature. It's a warm day today here in Virginia, so this was very easy to make soft. We're going to add our two-thirds of a cup of white sugar. So now we're going to, I just have a simple hand mixer. We're going to mix the softened butter with the sugar so it's light and fluffy. And as you can see, this is mixing very easily because the butter is so soft. Okay, the next step is we're going to put in two large eggs into our butter and sugar, and then we're going to mix that. Next we're going to add vanilla, and we need a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So here's the vanilla extract one teaspoon. You'll see vanilla extract in a lot of recipes, even recipes with chocolate, because it, it enhances the flavor. Okay, Amir. Okay, the next step can be a little messy. We are going to put the flour and the other dry ingredients in with the butter, sugar, and egg. And at this point, I'm going to start my mixer slowly because if I don't, my entire face is going to be covered with the flour. Slowly mix it until it's all mixed. Okay, so that's a pretty good mix. Now I'm going to have Amira come back and join me for the fun part. I'm back! Alright Amira, here's the fun part. This is the part you always like in our cooking shows where you get to taste yummy stuff. Yeah. So, if you remember, I mixed the wet and dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. And now we have to add what makes these biscotti special. Right. The first thing we're going to add is candied ginger. And candied ginger you can make your own. Basically, you boil fresh ginger root mm -hmm. and you add sugar to it and then you take it out and you cook it again. It's very time consuming. I usually just purchase mine already made. Mm -hmm. But candied ginger, I don't know if you've ever used ginger to settle your tummy, mm -hmm. but it's really good to chew on to settle your tummy. Yeah. In fact, I think Amira likes to chew on candied ginger. You want to try a piece? Sure. It's very sweet and it has a zip. It has some pepper. Let's watch her face. Let's see when she gets to the point where it gets peppery. What do you think? Good? Okay, so go ahead and dump that in there. That's two-thirds of a cup of chopped candied ginger. And you do want it chopped because otherwise it would choke you. Yeah. Okay. Now the next ingredient we're going to add is white chocolate chips, a half a cup. And then to add some crunch, I've pre-toasted some sliced almonds, which taste really good. Go ahead and add those. Yep. Now, this could get a little messy, so be careful, Mira. With your strong arm, I want you to gently fold those ingredients together. And you remember how to fold, lift, and turn. Lift and turn. There you go. Fold like you're folding a, like pretend you're folding a sheet where you'd fold it over. There you go. Great. It's a little stiff. That's actually what you want because we're going to have to form this 
into loaves. All right, Amira, so what we've done now is the dough that we've stirred up, isn't that cute little pat of dough? Give it a pat with our clean hands. So what we want to do is we want to cut this dough in half. Can you eyeball a half? Yep. That's our dough cutter, so go ahead and cut it in half. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take each half and we're going to shape it. You want to do one and I'll do the other? Sure. Maybe get a little bit more here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we want to shape it into a log right here, and we want it the same size. So I usually go like this. Wait, turn off the pan. I usually go like this, and then I flatten it a little bit, and I want my ends kind of square because then if I don't have them square, then the biscotti at the end will be too pointy. All right, there's your log. This is Amira's log and this is Aunt Nellie's log. And now we're gonna bake it in the oven at 325, low and slow for about 25 minutes or so. What we're gonna do is this is, remember we said biscotti is twice baked? Mm -hmm. So this is baking number one as a log. And then baking number two is we cool this, dry it, cut it into the slices and rebake it. All right, okay, let's, let's do, do it. it. Okay, Amira, now's the time we've been waiting for. This is what our biscotti looks like after it baked in the oven at 325 for about 24 minutes. Basically the texture right now, it, you can think of it as a cookie right now. Soft and, cookie. A soft cookie. And then once we bake it again, it'll become more crispy like an actual biscotti. And it'll taste wonderful. Twice baked. Twice baked, that's what biscotti means. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna cut it and I have to confess that I took a little bite out of the end because I wanted to make sure it tasted good. It was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so as I cut, Amira is going to lay these out flat on the pan. Yep. And a lot of times with biscotti, people cut them horizontally, or excuse me, diagonally. Yes. Uh, I think I might just cut them horizontally. So as you can see, I am using what they call a serrated knife. It doesn't have a flat edge. It has like a zigzag. And you want that because it cuts through the bread better. Okay, Mira, we're ready to put these in the oven. So as you can see, beautiful. They are so wonderful looking right now. This is a beautiful presentation, and I can't wait till they become nice and crispy. And we actually tasted them at this stage before they were crispy, and what do you think? They are good. These are so good. I know. These are so good. I know. These look incredible. We're gonna put them back in the 325 oven for about 10 minutes or so. Sometimes they'll recommend that you flip them. We'll see how they look. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. Well, Amira, here they are, all done, crisped up, and ready to dunk in some tea. What do you say? I say that this was such a success, and it's gonna taste so good, especially in some nice caramel tea. That That's sounds it. good. That sounds pretty good. Look for us next time. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what we should make next.